Hi, my name is Abigail Page, and I'm going to be talking about Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. Ink Heart brings literature to life, both figuratively and literally. The main character is a girl named Maggie, who lives with her father named Mo, both of whom loved love reading, but Mo will never read aloud to her. Uh, one night, the pair have a mysterious vi- a visitor named Dustfinger, and Mo makes them all leave for the home of Ma- Maggie's aunt, Eleanor. Shortly after that, Maggie's father, Mo, is kidnapped, and it is a race against the clock to find her father and uncover the mystery of her father's hidden power. The book is full of adventure, fantasy, and the importance of family and friends. I first found this book when I was in middle school, and it, ever since then it has stayed on my bookshelf because I feel as though I relate to the main character so much, and hearing about the character's passion for literature further sparked my love of literature. And so the excerpt I'm going to read for you from Inkheart is when uh, Maggie first sees the, the mysterious visitor that comes to the house in the first chapter. That night, when so much began and so many things changed forever, Maggie had one of her favorite books under her pillow, and since the rain wouldn't let her sleep, she sat up, rubbed the drowsiness from her eyes, and took it out. Its pages rustled promisingly when she opened it. Maggie thought this first whisper sounded a little different from one book to another, depending on whether or not she had already knew the story it was going to tell her. But she needed light. She had a box of matches hidden in the drawer of her bedside table. Mo had forbidden her to light candles at night. He didn't like fire. Fire devours books, he always said. But she was 12 years old. She surely could be trusted to keep an eye on a couple of candle flames. Maggie loved to read by candlelight. She had five candlesticks on the windowsill, and she was just holding the lighted match to one of the black wicks when she heard footsteps outside. She blew out the match in alarm. Oh, how well she remembered it, even many years later. And knelt to look out of the window, which was wet with rain. Then she saw him. The rain cast a kind of parlor on the darkness, and the stranger was little more than a shadow. Only his face gleamed white as he looked up at Maggie. His hair clung to his wet forehead. The rain was falling on him, but he ignored it. He stood there motionless arms crossed over his chest as if that might at least warm him a little. And he kept on staring at the house. Thank you.